Hi there, I'm Danny Henderson, spiritualtherapist.com. And today I'm so excited to bring to you guys out there my lovely, beautiful friend, George H. Lewis. Welcome, George. Danny, it's so nice to be here with you. Real, it's such a pleasure. And just ahead of your amazing conference. Exactly, just a couple of days to go. And on the conference, guys out there that may not know at this point, and we're hosting the biggest event in disclosure on planet earth october 21 22 and 23 which is just a couple of days away at this point there's going to be speakers from around the world long-term veterans of disclosure in ufo off planet space science astronomy the real history of planet earth and i do believe i just made up a word astronomy but i meant to say astronomy and talking of astronomy and astrology that leads me beautifully segues beautifully into george h lewis and one of your many talents my love speak to us about what you know about astrology and what you do please well i kind of like actually the fact that you made this um not a slip this integrative uh, qualitative uh, linguistic uh, thing but mixing astronomy and astrology you see astronomy is it, it's connected to the left brain, it's the rational, and it tells you everything that is. Astrology, by contrast, is the feminine, it's the right brain, it's the Dionysian, as Nietzsche might say, and it, and it connects to everything of how we feel. And if you think of our corpus callosum, we really are, when we're activated properly as human beings, we're integrating the left and right hemispheres of the brain. So astro whatever you said, astronomy mixed with astrology is really when we have liftoff as a, as a soul incarnate, because we're tapping in to that Dionysian, the astrology and the Apollonian, which is the rational. And we need both because that is what it is to be human. And so astrology is, is beautiful because it tells you more about your soul contract. I mean, just looking at astrology for your conference coming up, isn't it beautifully auspicious that we have an exact conjunction of Venus and the Sun in Libra. Now, Venus rules Libra, it rules Taurus as well, but it's all about balance, finding the balance between the polarity. Really, with the Libra archetype, it's holding space for more than one opinion and saying, well, let's focus on the energetics, the vibration. Does that vibration serve the helix going up towards light consciousness, which is what God is, as opposed to does it create division, which is separation, which is pain, loss, suffering? And I see this conference being somewhat auspicious because not only do we have the Venus Sun conjunct Libra, we actually have a Mercury in Libra too. Mercury, how we communicate, Venus, how we love. And the Sun, of course, is our conscious sense of self. So I see already um, something very positive emerging over this coming weekend. I love it. I love the way you go into your astrology and you bring so much beautiful light and emotion into it too. It's just so magical. And as I, as you know, the dates for the event, October 21, 22 and 23 of 2022 were not decided by me, but more by divine guidance, divine synchronicity. And I had no idea that we were going to be in this um, astrological realm with the sun and Venus, etc., cetera, um, at this great auspicious time. So, George, um, go ahead, go ahead. I've just got to say, I have to share something also, which is kind of, I just, it just came to me as you were saying this. What is so powerfully auspicious about this date is especially once the moon moves into Libra, which is around the 22nd of October, maybe the, at the end of 22nd, we have this beautiful grand trine between the sun, Venus, Mercury, and the moon, all in Libra but making a trine with what we call the malefics. The malefics are always where we have problems and struggle. And we, when we can move through them, we, we, we grow, but it's stressful. We have Mars in Gemini. We have Saturn in Aquarius making what's called a grand trine, 120 degrees. You are supported beyond astrologically, galactically in this time. People are going, entities are gonna try, but they ain't gonna succeed. You are protected. That's amazing. I know all of us have felt very protected um, coming uh, coming together at this great time. And, and I think I can speak for every single speaker and pretty much most of the attendees who are at this point almost a thousand um, in number. Each one of them has had their own individual journey of how to get to this conference, how to be part of this great disclosure um, event in the history of our planet. Um, and it's just a beautiful coming together and a collapsing in of all timelines, of all structures, of all systems, um, you know, politics and monarchy. 
you know, let's talk about monarchy for a moment. You know, that's been very much throughout the history that we've been told to learn, read and, and, and digest and then repeat because that is what history is. It's his story. So everything that we've ever seen, grown up with or been taught is what we've been told to think and then espouse as truth. But what we're coming to understand, us humans are so clever, we're so smart, we've gone beyond the realms of the old guard, the old low vibrational energy, and now we're in our own light frequency, and we're all deciding to disseminate and feel, how does that resonate with me? Does that feel right to me? Do I have an emotional tug because that person said this and I like them? Or do I have the courage to stand on my own as a sovereign? beautiful soul. I don't like the word sovereign, but everyone throws it around so people will relate to that, but independent individual spark of the all. Um, I think it's beautiful. Let's go into a little bit of who George H. Lewis is. Let's go back to childhood, please, because it's quite fascinating. Um, let's start with your schooling and who you went to school with. Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's funny because I'm going to sound quite British because it's, it's, it's weird. I mean, people say I'm kind of Cinderella in reverse. I did grow up somewhat privileged in the sense I went to some of the very best schools that Britain had to offer. Um, I went to, um, you know, at the time, a prep school, which, you know, was at the very, the most popular. And I want to say this, though, to listeners, whatever I say, I'm not attacking individuals. It's very important, this. So when we get onto the conversation about monarchy, if we do, or we go down the school system, we're going through all old systems, I'm not really going to focus on specific individuals because they're playing a role. And people within systems can sometimes have good intention, but they're caught in a low frequency. And so for me, it's not so much about the individuals. These systems were just not serving humanity at his her best so i went to a very good school i went to the same um, pri primary school prep school as we called it uh, as prince william and harry and uh, it was it was all boys and it was it was tough um, i made the most of it but it was lonely in a way because one's emotional intelligence one's spiritual intuition it was something that is was asked to be suppressed and that was hard for me. So one had to sort of numb oneself down quite a lot to sort of get through it. But I suppose that's what's allowed me to get to where I am now in being able to understand the breakdown of the civilization. You see, these old systems have run out of steam. They may, be, they may have served to humanity at one point, perhaps. I'm op open to that conversation, but they certainly don't now. And they are being torn down. And it's nothing to do with, with me or individuals. This is an archetypal truth. Britain is a Capricorn country. And uh, every country has a chart. And Pluto, the planet of, of deep, deep change, transformation, death and resurrection, is in the constellation of Capricorn has been since 2008. And, you know, I can talk about the financial implications of that on the financial instruments, systems, currency, corporations, or we can talk about the, 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 the monarchy. You know, the monarchy is, 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 has run out of steam in the United Kingdom because it doesn't serve we the people at the level of consciousness that we deserve today. It is that simple. So it's not personal. And I think when we tap into these archetypes, it's why astrology is so powerful. We can begin to see the wood from the trees. We can begin to see truth and not our own belief systems of, you know, the, the, the monarchy when the queen died. Well, when we were told the queen died, that's a whole other conversation. We, we, we can stand back and observe it for what it is, which is one big pantomime and control system to keep us still in that frequency of the past. And instead, we have to dislodge that, that frequency and, you know, and create a new harmonic. I work through sound, through frequency, through music. And it's all about vibration. We're entering into a new frequency, hence the galactic um, conference that you're organizing. We are tuning up. And as a result, when we tune up, we can see the darkness more because the bandwidth of the frequency has increased on both sides, light and dark. Yeah, incredible. Again, so many different ways to go. Um, I want to come back to you in a moment, um, the astrology of France, Russia, and America. Um, it, to, to my mind right now, in terms of the galactic, galactic expression on planet, there are millions and millions of people who've had galactic experience, like real life, paranormal, real life contact, 
some have had abductees, some have been negative abductees, some positive abductees, whatever the story of the individual that brings them to the awareness that there is other species of planet, which is something we were all told wasn't true, which is why we've had to have all of these individual experiences so we know our own truth without being told and brainwashed into believing. Um, it seems to me at this moment, when we look at people like Elena Denan and uh, Jean-Charles Moyen, who are French contactee experiences with other off-world humans, other beings, other species, um, it's the French leading this revolution. Um, and um, so I wanna look at the, the astrology of, the, of France, of Russia, and of America. You shared already that the UK is Capricorn in essence and say, so, well, look at the other three. But before we go there, let's go back a bit to you going to school with William and Harry. So in our country, culture, Great Britain, we grow up with seeing the royal family on television and something happens internally. There becomes this it kind of unquestionable affection that we have for a family that we're told this is our queen, this is the prince, this is the princess, and it's all very romantic. It also plays into the childhood stories of princes and princesses and dragons and this and that and this and that. Um, and so it served a purpose potentially. Uh, but again, here we are now, and we're all realizing that we don't, so I speak for myself, I do not give permission to one single being on my planet or off my planet to tell me what to think, how to breathe, how to feel and what to learn. No, I don't give my permission. I don't give my consent. Now, if somebody sees that as arrogant and they feel all pissed off because I trigger a lot of people, it's not deliberate, but I'm also not going to handle people's feelings. We have a duty to be able to speak our minds. And so it's beautiful when I say something like that and people get triggered and they think, oh my gosh, she's so arrogant, she's so this. It's because there's a program inside of them, a brainwashed element that is asking to be allowed to be looked at and to be felt through and thought through. And to me, that's where we are. We're opening up all of these doors and allowing ourselves to, you know, to, 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 to question everything. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we are totally expanding our level of frequency. I like to look at it in terms of, let's say, capital radio. We all know that from when we were younger in England, 95.8 FM. You can probably tune in and listen to 95.9 or 95.7, but beyond that, too much static, there's nothing. What's happened is the band of frequency has expanded up, much more light coming in. We see the star seeds coming in. It's why they've really forced the jab on the children in order to quash this to get it down to to manage it so we stay in this 3d matrix but here's the positive is conversations like this are happening around the world people are waking up this, this is the great awakening the timeline did change in 2016 this has been long in the plan and of course you know you, you lose a few battles but hopefully we win the war this is a battle a cosmic battle which has come down to earth uh, between the light and the dark and so what i see is our bandwidth our frequency levels are going up, but as a result, we can see the demons more because it, we, this is a world of polarity. So, you know, five, 10 years ago, if people said there was major satanic child trafficking and stuff like that and genetic experimentation on a massive scale, it doesn't matter whether it's in the US or China, people would just say no nonsense conspiracy. Today, more and more people, not everyone, but more and more people are listening because they're tapping into their own frequency and know something's off. And this is part of our awakening, is coming to terms that some of these things do happen. And you know, the new age movement sometimes can be very divorced from understanding the dark side. And I say this to my friends in the new age movement is to really live in the light, to understand lightness. Mm -hmm. You have to understand darkness because we have to become alchemists. So I'm jumping around a lot here, you know, with the charts and stuff and we can get more to the UK chart, the EU chart, but this is a time of ascension. And uh, there are many people and organizations which are scared of that, which are deliberately being put in place to keep us at a specific frequency. We're yeah. bursting out of that now. Yeah, we've gone past it. Um, so in terms of, uh, again, yeah, frequency, polarity, who we are as we come into our own awareness and having been programmed as British, you and I in particular, as British people, um, you grew up in that environment and I worked in it as a nursery nurse, as a children's nanny. So we are both ends of the, the scale where I was, um, 
you know, kind of err uh, downstairs in the kitchens, uh, although really I was in the nursery. Um, so it's a little bit more elevated in terms of the hierarchical systems in any regard. Um, and so I would walk, you know, my my 10 year old charge, as they're called, up to Kensington Palace because I lived in Kensington with this uh, aristocratic family. And uh, we would go up and and a couple of times and uh, and the 10 year old would go and play with uh, Lady Gabriella Windsor. And there, all the apartments at Kensington Palace had stairs that went down into the children's playroom. And so they would meet with William and Harry uh, down there. So it's quite extraordinary uh, that we all have these different stories. Some of us that all kind of blend together on different layers and levels. And you actually went to school with them. Mm -hmm. um, and so as the screen, the, you know, the, the telescope is fully on this family, the magnifying glass, and we're seeing that family unit disperse, splinter, disintegrate, people are deciding to hate this person and that person, because of course everyone at home watching knows what, really what's going on, don't they? Not, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> we all have our ideas about what we think about people and we all sit and we gossip and we all do it, but we're watching within our, before our very eyes, a hierarchy. <laughs> system ancient royal monarchist system just just dissolve it's dissolving in front of us so from your perspective as a young man at prep school with Winnie, William and Harry as they're getting slaughtered um what were they like what were they like as young well people? they were younger than me they were in my brother's year but you know obviously I met them throughout you know my 20s and stuff in different situations but I, I think for me personally, it's more about the institutions. I mean, the individuals, I think, are playing their roles, their archetypal roles. I, I, I'm going to settle on this, that I actually have radical compassion for a lot of these people who are caught in these archetypal behavioral patterns. And, um, you know, I, I, I can't speak with authority on this because I haven't seen them for a while. I've lived now in the United States for a Jupiter cycle, 12 years, and my home is here. I, 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 I profoundly believe in the Constitution. My job is to educate people about what that really means and the fact that it was hijacked. You know, and this isn't going to be a history lesson of 1871 and then the Titanic sinking in and the third Federal Reserve coming in at 1913. But those, if you do your research, those are powerful uh, indicators and, and, and breaks in the continuum of where our constitution, the Republic's constitution, was basically um, uh, sullied and eventually almost all but destroyed. And what we're doing, we, we, we are rebirthing that. So the United Kingdom, it's very different. You know, we, we all have this great sense of monarchy. And for many, many years, I would look up profoundly to the monarchy. I was profoundly a monarchist in my teenage years, my 20s, and even into my 30s, because I still believed that the Queen um, and the monarchy was there to serve we the people. And the more I opened up and realized that the institution doesn't do that. It is designed to do the opposite of that. It is designed to keep us in a frequency of control and in a way to give our power away. Very clever division of powers on the face of it between church and state, between government, the lower house, and then the upper house and the monarchy. But ultimately what it's about is, is about keeping us stuck in a system. And this is again the Pluto in Capricorn. Not only is the United States going through its Capricorn, its Pluto return. Every 248 years, Pluto does one solar orbit. We do it in 365 days, but Pluto does it in 248 years. And, you know, Pluto is the planet of transformation and she's going over. Um, the United Kingdom's chart, which is a Capricorn chart, when the UK was born in its current current iteration, January the 1st, 1801, um, the, 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 I, the sun, I believe, was at 10 degrees Capricorn. And then the moon was it's during an, uh, almost an eclipse, a full moon, and the moon was 19 degrees Cancer. I mean, it's interesting, the moon in Cancer on the 10th house would suggest military, would suggest real control. And uh, this whole system is coming down. And it, let's not make it personal. This is an archetypal truth of transition from, if you like, the age of Pisces, the age of illusion, delusion, and, and false light into um, the age of Aquarius, which could be AI control, 
But at the higher level, it's decentralization. It's we, the people, being venerated within the collective consciousness. And I believe, we believe, that this is a time of a great awakening where humans, for the first time since pre-flood, and I can get into that another time, are opening up to their innate power, their divine power. The word divine comes from the Sanskrit DVR, self-illumination. The people are ascending because we have to ascend together. We're all in this together. We can't have some of us benefiting, preying off, off the weak, the slaves, while children are being trafficked underground or above ground, whatever. No, but as this is being exposed, we are rising up because the human resonance is increasing. This is powerful. Any human can get behind this. This is the universal truth, and this is the glue and the magnetism of our ascension. Absolutely. So true. Again, you touched on so many different beautiful elements and areas there. Um, I wanted to, again, for the, the royal family, I know there are people grieving in the UK because the queen, the hierarchical um, head, uh, the head of the, um, the body um, of that uh, beast um, of, uh, of history, uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years um, has, uh, has gone. Um, and so with that comes, again, massive instant change. How could it not? How could it not? Um, so um, I would love to uh, end on the royal monarchist element with the beautiful um, Diana. Oh, yes. I mean, where do I start? I mean, I had a very profound personal experience with her. May I share that? I'm, I am hoping you will, sir. Um, uh, many years ago, I went back to Lugrove. I was an organist and a chorister at school, and the lovely headmaster said, George, please go and check out the new organ that's just been placed in the, uh, in the chapel. And um, I had already met Princess Diana a, 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 a few times before, but I had met her that, that day on, on the football match, uh, watching her son, Prince William, play rugby. One of my very best friends was very close to the family, we went back. Uh, to, to watch the, the game and so I'd already been introduced and I go down and I play the piano, the organ and in she comes on her own without any bodyguards and she sits plonk down next to me as I'm playing Bach's Toccata and Fugue in D minor and we basically chat for about 45 to 50 minutes and it was interesting I knew nothing about Palladian 5D consciousness at this stage I was a young you know 20 something and I just sensed this radiant light being sitting next to me. And I always used to play barefoot. And I said, oh, gosh, my Royal Highness, I hope my feet don't stink. And she said, oh, don't worry at all. You're playing beautifully. We're all human after all, aren't we? She was just so, she was so empathic. She was so kind. And I felt, I kind of felt, I, I, I re we recognized each other. And, and there was something about her, and obviously she was so wise in a way, but she was here to do something. And I think that story is going to play out more over the next five, 10 years as stuff is revealed. It's not for me to second guess what that role is, but I think as we awaken, she's going to be seen to have played a pivotal role in the awakening process of the United Kingdom of the world of structures. And, you know, I just, if I may get a little symbolic, uh, her astrology, which I haven't got in front of me, but I know there is some strong access point on Argal. And Argal is the head of Medusa. It's a fixed star and it's to do with sudden death beheadings. It's the Medusa complex. And what happened in that tunnel in 1997 and her death, I think is gonna be very interesting as truth slowly emerges, much like the JFK assassination, which we know a little bit more about now. It's a sense of there is stuff coming out. And all I share with you, and I don't wanna to be too cryptic, is I need you all listeners to bring out the child in you, to ask questions, to be curious, the archetype of the Pu'er, the eternal child, the Uranian, Uranus, Uranus principle of the full card in tarot is to be open to new stuff coming in. Because when we do the synapses fire up, the neuro neurological pathways in our being light up and suddenly we start to become younger biologically, forget the chronological age, it's not important. And we start to tap into the divine juice. The, the, the Jews call it the, the mania of heaven. We tap into powerful soul divinity uh, systems and we become part of the divine matrix as opposed to the limited three-dimensional one that we're hitherto coming out of. And I think, you know, with me and Princess Diana, there was an opening suddenly of 
this is something big. She spoke about the men in gray suits. You know, what does that mean? Some people talk about the Illuminati. Some people talk about the, 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 the deep state. It doesn't matter. The point is we weren't so knowledgeable before and now we're more knowledgeable now. This is a mass awakening and let's hold hands here and do it together. It's exciting, it's fun. Yes, it's a little bit uncomfortable, but we're all doing it together. So beautiful. And again, with Diana, she so wanted to be known as the Queen of Hearts and something she claimed for herself. And she was indeed. And imagine that her lifeline, her energy, her frequency positioned her in one of the most looked at and focused upon families on the entire planet so that she reached her radiance, reached right across the world, right across the world. And that's such a very clever part that that Diana uh, that Diana played. I'm going to continue in that vein for one second. I'm trying to hold on to you because you're so brilliant. There's so much that you're sharing here. I'm going to bring us back a little bit to the Queen. Um, can you tell us the timeline between Prince Philip dying and the Queen dying, please? What was the number in terms of numerology there? Well, it was very interesting when the Queen's death was announced. And I need you, all of you listen to this, my words. When the Queen's death was announced, it was exactly um, 1,776 days from the beginning of the pandemic. What does Corona mean? It means crown, okay? So we have 1776. What does 1776 mean? It's when the United States birthed the constitution for we the people saying no more, no more monarchy, no more George III, no more taxation without representation. This was a powerful document to take humanity writ large into a new beginning. Now, today's conversation with Marvelous Danny isn't going to be going into depth. We can do this another time about the dates that hindered the constitution, that set it back to do with the Federal Reserve, to do with the money supply, to do with many different things. But we also see not only in uh, September when the death was announced, it was exactly 17 months after the death of Prince Philip. And 17 is a very special number. And then you, you know, what number, what, what letter of the alphabet, for example, is 17. And, you, know, you start seeing this is a very interesting game or pantomime or play being played out on planet Earth. I, I implore you, I, I, what's the word? I, I, I desire of you to do your own homework, but you're gonna have to do your homework in a non-traditional fashion. If you Google stuff, you're not gonna get top marks in homework. You're, you're gonna, gonna have to look for <clears throat> Right, you're not gonna find it because that's one of the mon monopolizers in the yes. system to prevent us humans from finding information and finding truth. So Google Boogle <clears throat> will prevent people from actually finding the information that you're, you're speaking of. No, exactly, that's absolutely right. So it's, it's, it's all about, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's all about trying to um, go into the body, the somatic, the heart, and, and ciphering that way, um, instead of in the mind, which can play tricks on us, me included. I mean, I have a very strong air in my chart, which is the mind. And we have to really go back into the body. We have to really sit with it. And when we meditate, and when we tune in to our higher sense of self, our consciousness, our higher being, to God, to love, we really can start to see a little bit of truth, much more than just responding to the mainstream media. I mean, you know, the rule of thumb would be if the mainstream media tells you left, you go right. If the mainstream media tells you to go up, you go down. I mean, it's a pretty good rule of thumb today. So you right have to do now. the work yourself. Definitely, right now it is. Uh, before we come back to the France, Russia and America astrology, being that the UK is under Capricorn, um, with um, Diana, and closing that loop there somewhat. And you mentioned JFK's assassination. Um, again, I was at the Space Center, the Kennedy Space Center in Florida with my beautiful uh, friend, Elena Danan, who is a main speaker at our conference and really an Earth, Earth's a mystery for the Galactic Federation of Worlds, which is a benevolent collective, you know, of other humans and other military personnel, just because they happen to be in a different part of our solar system, doesn't mean they don't exist because this is how we've been so stupidized, stupidized to believe that it's only us and there's one God sitting up here saying, you will do my will. 
Well, we know that that's complete bollocks. We know that we're intelligent beings. So Elena and I went to JFK Space Center and um, we were looking at different monuments as you walk in and I walk over and there is a, a beautiful kind of um, concrete area with a big wall and then a fountain and the fountains on an angle and there's different fountains shooting up water elements. And then there's a beautiful photograph of JFK and there's some words by his beautiful face. And it says something like, um, never again will we allow a negative power to control us or that's what it means. And I just started crying and I'm looking at his beautiful face thinking, well, that's exactly what they are doing, what they have done. And they're making a mockery of you, Kennedy, still you know because everywhere we go i mean look at nasa nasa all you got to do is add the word t and you've got satan and we know that there is a massive massive um forceful hierarchical push and pull on that frequency on that energy which we're not going to bore ourselves with there's enough information out there that people will find if they don't go through google so back to um i was so emotionally moved by this and feeling real compassion for kennedy and what his you know his message was to free the people to discuss our brothers and sisters from upstairs and downstairs and then elena denan walks over to that same wall and then just is so emotional just sobbing you know because you can't not be touched by it but this is her journey this is her role part of her role was to bring that light for us and there are yes. others others that have come before her there are yes. others on the planet right now yes. but Elena Danan is one such being who has stepped forward in love who yes. is horrendously attacked again polarity light and dark that's what you're going to get everyone's playing a role um, but it was quite beautiful to uh, witness that um, am I saying that she's akin to Kennedy and Diana no, not specifically, but there are certain people in our timeline in history who um, come forward, step forward, they sacrifice, they come forward in love, and they create things like this. Yes, the true, yes. The true history of Earth. And this lady has um, been trained as a scientist and archaeologist, has a whole body of work in Egypt connected to Atlantis, and has brought us this tome this tome of work um, that is backed by academic Dr. Michael Seller, um, contact to your my, uh, Alex Collier, you know, uh -huh. and others. Yeah, and, and she really pieces together the different beings, the different species, the different histories of our planet, because it's time, you know, we can't trust, or I'll speak for myself, I do not trust, have never trusted the hierarchicals, the authoritarians. I've seen since a child that adults are frightened and they do as they're told and they follow, follow, follow. And this uh, WIFM, WIFM, what is WIFM? W-I-I-F-M. What's in it for me? The WIFM factor. What's in it for me? And most people, we are, because we have light and dark in all of us. Yes, we do. We have light and dark in all of us. Some of us are easily tempted to say, well, for the greater good of humanity, let's not tell them about this. And I'll take a little bit of the cake to keep my mouth shut and to build my business and to make my money. Because it's all in the name of humanity. Humanity is not ready. That is the most irritating slogan I've heard in years. Humanity is not ready. How rude, how insulting. And for me, we've got one celled amoebas who have been running our planet, my planet, your planet, our planet for so long that these one celled amoebas, they're such dimwit, they honestly think that we are as dimwitted and dumb as they are. They're so, they're so orgasmic on the adrenal high of the power that they arrogantly lost their way, they made errors in how fantastic and brilliant we are. Us godlike perfections of all the beautiful DNAs from all different parts of our solar system come together in one being. And when we find that resonance of love, everything is lit up on every level, and then there's no going back. When we light our way through the beings that we are, there is no stopping us. And this is where humanity is right now. Every country on the planet, every village, every city, every being 
is coming into their own light. What say you to that, my friend? I mean, it's just beautiful. I mean, this is, you know, uh, very galactic, but I, this is where I'm most comfortable actually talking because it's from the heart. I mean, I think it was um, Einstein who said, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, you think in terms of um, energy, frequency, and vibration. And I think what you're, you're also, something else came to me, which is the, the thoughts of, um, and those, I think it was Nietzsche, and those who were seen dancing, were thought to be insane mm. by those who could not hear the music. And it's like, we there's this polarity really being forced on the planet at the moment, and it's deeply uncomfortable for both sides. Radical compassion here, because it's deeply uncomfortable for people like us to see so many people choose the enslavement. Mm -hmm. And it's deeply uncomfortable for them because they're in the matrix, think the blue pill as opposed to the red pill because they think we are preposterously crazy. And I see this in the astrology, people who have strong Uranus or Uranian uh, in their chart, and I haven't done your chart yet, Danny, but I sense it is strong. You know, 45, Donald Trump has a, has a strong Uranus uh, thing going on. Um, I certainly do. It's the bringer of the new. Saturn is the old, Uranus is the new. Saturn is, is, is the old contracted control system, monarchy, institutions, fiat currency and the new is the uranium uh, it could be a return to gold and silver of a standard that is pure that is free obviously with maybe a cryptocurrency of some description before we transition into the galactic currency and obviously you can probably speak more to that than myself and certainly alex collier will be able to do very well at the conference but it's you know we are in a deep time of transition and the human body resonates at the same frequency as mother earth and when we are congruent with that vibration, the planet uh, is healed because we vibrate at it. And it is this, this desire to come home and to come home within the planet, but also without it, meaning from above, as above, so below, which is the magician card in the tarot. We're integrating the galactic with the terrestrial. Yeah, that's just so beautiful. So gently bringing us back to the astrology yes of france please okay this is going to be interesting so i mean i focused a little bit more recently in the eu chart but french chart is interesting and if i can recall off the top of my head we have a square because i believe the french chart which is um, from 1958. Don't forget, it's the Fifth Republic. We have to go from when the, the last iteration was set up under de Gaulle. Um, you have a Sun, Mercury, and Venus conjunct in Libra, and it's squaring the moon in Cancer. That I do recall, and that's powerful. Why? Because um, a lot of stuff is being activated now. I mean, we are in Libra season, and if I recall, we have a Venus, Mercury, and a sun going over the natal chart of France. And because the moon is squaring it, we're seeing some real um, tough pulling, tough. it's like a tug of war. And then, you know, Saturn at the moment is in Aquarius. Uh, I, 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 what I probably see actually is in 2023, France unraveling um, because Saturn will move into Pisces, which will then create a square with Saturn's natal, uh, Saturn in, in the French chart is natally, I think, in Sagittarius. But let's talk actually about the EU chart, because that, for me, in some ways is more important, because it's a lot of fixed energy and the lunar and solar eclipse that we're about to go into, which in some ways is the elephant in the room. In some ways, the next six weeks, and I say from now, in the current timeline, Danny and I sit here together on the 17th, interesting, 17th, uh, oh, I like number seven. Didn't even, didn't yeah. even click. No, it's, it's, it's interesting for lots of reasons. We're sitting here on the 17th uh, day of, of October. Um, we're, we're, we're coming to the end of Libra season and we're going to be entering quite soon the Scorpio season. But what makes Scorpio season remarkable this year is it's uh, the lunar node, solar, it's the, uh, the axis point of the nodes and the eclipse season. And we have Uranus in Taurus. We are going to see a barrage of new information come out, secrets 
bubble up to the top. And we're going to see, I would say, some major, major event happen, which is going to shock the world. And it's going to also allow us to transition eventually into this new system. It's going to be bumpy. None of us can predict. I don't sit here. I can look at the archetypes and see we're in for some serious pressure. We have to have it. We've come this point because not enough people are awake yet. There are so many sleepers, unconscious, normies, zombies, call them what you will. And they need to be shocked a little bit more into the truth. And when we have this, we then can go to the next stage because what's the whole purpose of the awakening? Never to have a civil war. Everyone loses with a civil war. Yeah. You know, we could talk about the first and second world wars. We can talk about the American civil war. No winners, control on both sides, control opposition. We all know that now. So the whole point of this project since the time I shifted to 2016 is to slowly, consistently awaken we the people so that we don't, we don't, we stop believing the program, we stop believing the tell a lie vision, the television, we stop believing the mainstream media, the narrative of the fixed matrix, and we start to open up to a whole potentiality of humans once again claiming their descent, claiming their position in the galaxy to live like Noah and beyond, 900 years like Yoda and beyond. Mm -hmm. And that's really how these bodies are designed. These bodies are not designed to wrinkle and crinkle and drop. You know, the force, the gravitational force, the density that we've been forced under. I mean, now that there's been elements removed from the atmosphere, the reptilian, the reptoid, the gray, for example, I'm sure I'm convinced, and I haven't heard this, I've never actually said this out loud either, um, but part of that pressure was definitely part of the programming of our chronological and biological organic system with all the bad foods, all the interferences, the drive to end us around the age of 72, which of course is a massive failure. You know, me at 55 right now, I'm like, I'm not even halfway through my life because I'm deciding that that's up to me now another ageless goddess that we know is Dr Christiane Northrup is it not now is she not one of the most luminescent I mean you sit with that girl her skin like she glows from the inside out in real life doesn't she I mean she, she does but it's also I always like to um connect people together so I've met you through her and you know I met Christiane through a friend and it's you know we were at this conference together well I mean I was attending and you were one of the keynote speakers with Christiane and I and I think it's so interesting how we are all gathering very quickly I mean she is uh, she in many ways is this very strong Venus Venusian quality but she has the archangel Michael strong behind her. She's a warrior because she's standing so profoundly up for our humanity, so profoundly up for our potentiality and for love, but she's prepared to fight for it. And that's in her archetype. Some people will do it differently and that's okay, but we must all tune in to our higher frequency of how we serve. Because when we serve, our biological age gets younger and younger. When we take and we don't give back, our chronological age shows. Amazing people say that by the age of 40, I think you get the face you deserve. And that there are <laughs> sayings as well that you can always see a mean, selfish person because the inside comes out, you know, unless they've had a bit of stretch and a bit of pull and a bit of jab, 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 <laughs> you know, which I haven't, I used to, but now I'm like, ah, this is my face. I'm just going to leave it. But back to Christiane, you're so right. You know, she, she, she to me is also one of the bravest warriors of our time. And she has been fighting for female gynecology, female health, female um, attention on the trauma, the trauma birthing process. You know, how barbaric that we lie on our backs to birth our babies, which is so wrong. It is against, again, gravity, but the systems, the hierarchy at the authoritarians, the masculine, you know, not bashing the men, but you did kind of balls up men for a long time. Um, you know, now like no one knows more about a woman's body birthing cycle, a baby growing cycle than the females, the women, the beings that birth the human race. And Dr. Christiane Northrup is one of these iconic women 
who for long into long term, we will be quoting her, we will oh. continue to read her books, we will continue to listen to her, we'll continue to see her on stage because she's still very much standing up for humanity. That woman, that lady, that goddess has created an online ability for people who've worked across the healthcare industry on our planet who wanna speak up but don't know what to say about the crimes against humanity they witnessed in the last 30 years, but especially in the last three years, that she's created with others, a team of great doctors who love humanity first, who love humanity first. And they created easy templates for people to go on and write an affidavit, 22 different templates from wherever you are in the medical industry to say what you saw, and sign your name or, an, or a fake name, nobody cares, but just stand in truth against crimes against humanity. And that we will bring to justice serial killers with people such as a person who was put in charge. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't have put him in charge of a box of crayons. And his name sounds like Wouchie. Or, or get the ouchie. Yeah, yeah, right, right, right. So yes, yeah, so Dr. Christiane Northrup, we love you. I know George loves you deeply. I love you deeply. And she's going to be there in the audience at the greatest gathering of humans in all of history. In all of history, history. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Um, okay, so we did France. You are kind of going to Sagittarius, but just to end that, before going into the EU, if you were to say right now, as France has been a leader in this revolution, this galactic revolution over the last few years, where would France have sat if we're Capricorn as British, where would France have sat before moving France forward? Well, I mean, it's, it's interesting with um, France. I'm just, the sun is in Libra. So it's, it's always been about polarity and balance. And certainly Libra is ruled by Venus. So we're talking about taste. And, you know, the French, whatever one thinks, they have pretty good taste. Oh. You know, I mean, whether it's architecture, you know, think of Haussmann who designed Paris, modern Paris. I mean, I, 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 I focus, to be honest, a little bit more recently on the European chart. And I'll tell you why. is because it's coming up for its Saturn return. And so it's very activated the EU chart because at the end of the day for the system for France to come back into her glory or Britain, we, we have to destroy these, these, sorry, these supernational structures have to be torn down. Supernational means beyond national. So the EU chart is very activated now until next year. It was founded in its current iteration, I believe in November, 1993 at 12 a.m. in Brussels. So the EU is having what's called its Saturn return at the end of this year through the beginning of 2023. It's a tough time. Why? Because Saturn in Aquarius in the seventh house is there natally. So it's having its Saturn return. Saturn is a contraction, restrictions, things coming up which haven't worked. Um, you know, you're, you're seeing things like in the house of employment. I think Saturn in Aquarius is in the sixth or seventh house, depending on which system you use. Big issues to do with currencies and institutions. Um, and there is also this T-square, which is forming between Uranus and the North Node, which is in Taurus. And that's squaring the natal ascendant, which is the identity of the EU and how it's perceived in the world. And that's at 17 degrees Leo. So rapid, rapid, fast change in the identity of the European Union. I also remember that the, uh, the moon, uh, the natal moon is, um, uh, the natal moon is at 24 degrees Leo, I think, yes. And it's on the midheaven. So that's creating a square between Saturn. So this doesn't bode well for the EU. So we're gonna see a lot of shifts coming through, especially with the Scorpio Taurus eclipse season. The eclipse season starts on the 25th to 26th of this month. So literally, you know, in a week's time, and it goes through to November the 8th, where we have the full lunar eclipse um, in, in America and in the Northern Hemisphere and a partial solar eclipse on the 25th, 26th. Now with the eclipse season, it plays out for a while. So not everything happens directly between now and November the 8th. A lot of things will 
well, but it's going to play out throughout the month of November into December. So we're going to see huge, huge shifts in all those Taurus, Scorpion area, Scorpio areas to do with secrets being revealed, institutions being taken down, hidden money uh, emerging. Where's the gold and silver being hidden? Stuff like that, you know, where, where, and, and, and new currencies coming in. Uranus and Taurus, new beginnings. Isn't it interesting that the last time Uranus was in Taurus, Taurus often rules things like food. We had the beginning of fast foods in America in the 1930s. Now, to begin with, that seemed to have some benevolence, feeding a nation after the Dust Bowl and all the, the, the poverty that was obviously artificially created, by the way, in the 30s and 40s with the Second World War. But then, of course, the monster that became McDonald's. And I believe McDonald's has just gone bust, too. I think that will be revealed quite soon. A lot of these institutions have basically, um, the CEOs have had to resign or they are in free fall because we are in a time of huge change. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing. Thank you for that. In terms of Russia, what is the frequency or the star sign that we would put over Russia? You know, I, I, I don't have that. It's interesting. I don't have that to hand, but I know a bit more about Mr. Putin. Um, and I actually, I would love to, to talk about maybe another time with you, Russia, the United States and China's charts together and how they work. And what we see is not what we get. In the mainstream media, it's almost oppositional, the truth. Well, it's not the truth, it's the opposite, it's total lies. But Mr. Putin's chart is very interesting because Mr. Putin's chart and Mr. Xi Jinping's chart and Mr. Mr. T's chart are definitely uh, rebels in the making. They have some big stuff going on. Um, maybe we can talk in more detail another time about that because yeah. I'd like to actually dig them out and maybe show them to your audience um uh, what's going on but i mean with russia certainly uh how would i say this what you see happening what most people see on all western media is really not the truth and um, what is happening in ukraine is profound but it is a cleanup of very dark uh trafficking of bioweaponry of uh, of of of, of, of um, uh, really stuff that is well, some of the most darkest stuff that's happened on this planet yeah. has been happening in Ukraine. It has. And we've got to be a bit careful because unfortunately, uh, boob tube is still governed by the dark hats or the darkness, unfortunately, because they take once you start telling the truth, they boob tube, the people that run it, the infiltrators in it, the dark ones in it. It's not all dark, of course. Of course, it's not. But it's become the main platform. So it's the platform that's the most looked at. And anyone who thinks that Telegram and Signal and, oh, come on, they think you're not being watched. <laughs> you know, they're everywhere. The eyes are everywhere. Um, it's amazing to me, uh, but not surprising, how many, um, how many times in our lives that we are somehow, like you and I, the connections to royalty, the things that we saw in the timeline, Diana, for example. I was a nursery nurse during that time. I met them, I saw them, you went to school with them. It's really fascinating. Um, so I was in Costa Rica a few weeks ago because I lived there the last two years, as you know. And um, one day I was talking to my friend um, who's a Canadian who's lived there a long, long time and is connected to everybody, everybody. I'm sitting in my house on the mountain one day, like a year ago, maybe longer now, and I felt all this energy coming in and I'm like, what the hell is that? And then I literally heard something say, they're here. And I'm like, holy God, oh my God, the billionaires are here. And that town is called Santa Teresa and it is in Costa, Costa Rica near a town called Malpais. Santa Teresa, Costa Rica. And many, many, many of the big fat wallets have bought themselves mansions up in the mountains. And I was like, are you kidding me? I came here to fix my broken heart because my beloved died very suddenly. I'm at the top of the highest mountain in Santa Teresa and these buggers are all coming in. Now, the president of uh, what's his face, Canada, or Chinada, whatever you want to call it. I also lived there for two years in Calgary, Alberta. That president 
wouldn't let his his people please wouldn't let the people leave can you imagine like that's why i'm saying china it's just so chinese right that the way that they're 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 tortured and they're abused and they're imprisoned in their own country the president of canada was walking down my road was walking down my high street with his family weeks ago in santa teresa costa rica that's where i lived for the last two years people and so jack dorsey twitter has a house there this person that person oh yeah they're not getting away with it that's where they all went that's where they're all buying houses all buying you know it's so funny the people there say when they go past a house with gates because the jungle it's the jungle you know it's such a beautiful town it's so quaint and organic and you know there's the supermarkets there. It's like ronnie's one Ronnie one, Ronnie two, the eggs are in a little cardboard thing with cellophane over the top. Like it's so beautifully old fashioned and organic, but the money there is insane. There aren't proper roads, they're mud roads, you know, but, but the, the, the wealth is coming in. And that bloke who's been running Canada wouldn't let the people leave, walking down the road on holiday with his family, like a twat, you know, like saying, look at me. I run the country, but they can't leave. How dare he? How dare they? You know, so yeah, gloves are off. We're all speaking. We're all telling the truth and nothing shall be done. No more people shall be held back because we don't allow it. We don't allow it. It's that simple. It's energetic. It's not arrogance. And again, if people get triggered, that's a program in them. They are allowed to say what they think and what they feel and what they believe to be true. And because I witnessed this and people took photographs of that bloke walking down the street in Santa Teresa, Costa Rica, it's true. It's not fourth, fifth, sixth hand. It's not me at home eating my Cheetos and drinking my soda, you know, in my, in my mum's basement watching telly and then calling Vivian, Oi Viv, did you see that bloke? That That's what people are coming from, right? Attacking all of us who've got the balls to sit and share, to try and help people think a little bit different down the road and around the corner. And I also wanted to talk a little bit about, because yeah, you and I make hours and hours and hours I know. sharing our own information. And Danny, you do have very big balls. I know! <laughs> I know! <laughs> I know that. <laughs> I know. Should have been a man. Oh my God. Listen to this. Listen to this. I have to tell you because so many terrible things are happening, right? So many people say the worst things. And of course it hurts. Of course it does. We're humans. I mean, I get sometimes I think, oh, ow, that's so painful that somebody said that. But people say stuff. Anyway, I was talking to my friend David Mahoney. You know Mahoney. Yes. And it was, I do want to say, I do, I love Mautataki. I love yes. him. He's a beautiful, beautiful soul, a sweet man. And I love how he brings the indigenous of the Maori yes. in New Zealand and, mm -hmm. and the Lemurian information. He's also known as Huna Flash to those Huna of Flash. you that Thank don't you. know Mauta Taki. Mm -hmm. um, so Mauta had a conference and he invited um, Dr. Christiane Northrup and I and others uh, to come and open. It was the very first, what's now known as Burning Mask. Um, and so that was, it was at, at uh, Mauta's uh, conference that, that we met and somebody else was there that I'd just forgotten who I was going to say. Well, David Mahoney was there David as well. Mahoney, that's right. Mahoney was there hosting. Yeah. He's so funny. And uh, he said to me the other day, because I did a broadcast with him that's on, that's on Rumble right now. And uh, he said to me, oh my God, Danny, he said some woman was throwing herself. I mean, David's very handsome and he's very charismatic, you know, and the women love him. And he's such a naughty, rebellious, outspoken, you know, avatar. And uh, a woman was throwing himself herself at him and he very delicate was saying, I'm sorry, I'm not available. You know, thank you very much. And she said to him, well, anyway, your friend, Danny Henderson, she's a man. <laughs> I'm like, uh, last time what? I checked, I'm actually, yeah, definitely a woman. I know, but this is what happens. Well, oh, well that, if I can just use my language, that's definitely not a vibrational match. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I will kick your ass. <sighs> it's my masculine. I'm def definitely balanced. But it's like people saying, oh, no, I'm, 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 hold on a minute. No, they're in Gitmo. 
Yeah, yeah, millions of no, they've already been beheaded and murdered and hung, drawn and quartered, and they're in this prison and they've been. We don't know that. We don't know. Yet. We don't know. We yeah. don't know that. So, so it's very dangerous when we just suddenly plug into the program mm -hmm. that's been plugged into us that mm -hmm. we go on the assumption that's taken care of because that stops us seeking. Yeah. It stops us searching. Now, while we're on the elements of truth, on sacred geomatra, on astrology, on astronomy, on lineups, on energetic frequencies, let's talk for a moment because you touched on it briefly, and then we will have to bring this to a close. But you and I, I want to say to the to the viewers out there, if you enjoy George H. Lewis as much as I do, and you would love for he and I to come back and have another little chit chat, we would love to. So let us know in the comments underneath, not in the live chat, but in the comments, and we will definitely come back. But George, my darling, let's go a little bit into the creation the patterning, the planning and the symmetry of London, Paris and Rome. They were all created with the exact same blueprint, the very deliberate purposeful blueprint. There are no mistakes and no errors on the perfection of the mathematics of each of those cities in particular, Paris, London, Rome and Washington. <laughs> So, yeah, it's, it's very interesting you bring Paris into this because, you know, for me, the three city states have always been the Vatican controlling religion, spirituality, London, the city of London, specifically, it's not London, it's the city of London, which, you know, Americans might call the equivalent of Wall Street. And that's controlled the money supply, the currency. And then the Washington, the District of Columbia, has controlled the military. So P Paris, you'll have to educate me where that fits in as far as the city states, because uh, how, what, how would you include Paris? Well, if we look at symbology, if yes. we look at Rome, not even the Vatican, but other big main squares in Rome. Uh, oh, I see. Architecturally, yes. Right. We also have, not only do we have what's called in masonry, the magic square, everything yeah. is so mathematically brilliant yeah. to, the, to the inch, to the nth degree, but we have one specific um, structure or building <clears throat> or statement in each of those major cities, and that is the obelisk. Obelisk, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, and that's where we, you know, have to keep on asking questions. And I don't pretend to be an expert on this at all. But, you know, the, 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 the penis of Osiris and the Egyptian connection, which you see for me, the Egyptian connection, ancient Egypt, is um, the last connection to Atlantis, but an Atlantean which has been distorted. You see, I, and this is my own belief system, that Atlantis at one point was a really remarkable civilization, but it, it tore itself up, it ate itself up, and it destroyed itself. It didn't come from without. It was dark and nefarious powers taking over, and then we have the Great Flood. That's just my in intimation, and I'm, I'm ready to, be, um, uh, to adapt into more knowledge as I learn more from people, especially at this forthcoming conference. Uh, but but I, I certainly think the Masonic uh, details and the, um, the gematria and the architectural symbolism is very, very, very powerful because it sets an intention for the future, for control, for systems, a perpetuation of power, of controlled power. And the more we learn as a civilization about, about the symbolism of these ancient and somewhat new monuments in DC, uh, they can be... Um, alchemized. I would posit that the United States in its next iteration of, of, it, of the Republic, which is being born now, it's being birthed, it takes a while, uh, there will be a new capital, if there's a capital at all. I believe we're going towards a time of decentralization, of localization. The globalists are trying their last gasp. This is the Saturn Uranus square in its finality. It's the last square of the cycle. And I, I, I see the collapse of Saturn, Satan um, happening within the next year or two and the birth of a new planet really start to externally take shape. So starting uh, in 2023, uh, we, we don't see it externally. We see it internally. If you think of with all our yogic, spiritual breathwork practices, the multifarious practices that we all can uh, embody, mind, body, spirit, 
But um, you know, these three systems or four, the Parisian, London, Rome, is an old sort of Pontifus Maximus Roman control system that is now being alchemized because we're beginning to see the control system even within the body architecture themselves. And so we are going to um, imagine out of that as we birth a new earth. I love it. And the, you know, the old guard, as in the Roman, the Maximus Butticus. <laughs> Stop it, Maximus Butticus. Um, the, right, the old guard. The Darling, old guard. I never realized your Latin was so good. It's so good, I'm so gifted. And again, look at that, Latin. Latin, the ancient language, you know, for the scholars and the academics. And then it suddenly went underground. Why? Because they wanted a secret private language just for the very elite who chose it, themselves, the family. It, 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 we had this riddle at school. Latin is a dead language, as dead as dead can be. First it killed the Romans and now it's killing me. <gasps> whoa, 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 amazing, amazing. Well, listen, as we're just again, just giving our beautiful audience here um, things to think about if they've never heard of this, and most have, I mean, I cannot believe. Number one, the people that seem to come onto my channel in particular, unbelievably brilliant, smart, bright, connected, spiritual. They know who they are. They know who they are. And, and they're so loving. And I have so many other people with channels saying, you get such loving comments. You get such, I'm like, yeah, I seem to attract such super smart, beautiful, gifted, but the same as the audience for, for our conference, the audience, the beings in the audience, the people in the audience just so beautiful and connected and they know they're coming to a safe space they're going to be with their star families they're going to share their secrets their knowledge their resonance with each other this is a rising in energy a fabric you know a, a bump in the fabric of consciousness on so many levels it's just going to be amazing i just wanted to talk a little bit about the obelisk um, and also in, in France, um, you know, one of the most iconic symbologies we have in terms of structure, well, two of them um, <clears throat> are the Eiffel Tower, which we'll leave for next time. I want people to have a look at that symbology, look it up. What is the shape? What does it look like? How, who do we connect it to other than Tesla, for example? Little, little bit of drip, drip, drop, drop there. And then also look at the pyramid, um, it, you know, which is the entrance to the most famous museum in Paris called the Louvre, L-O-U-V-R-E, the Louvre. Why is there a beautiful modern glass pyramid in the center of this ancient metropolis, this palatial metropolis, these ancient hundreds and hundreds of years old palace? And in the middle is this you know, these are things to think about and look at. But if we go back to the obelisk, <clears throat> which for those that don't know, if you go to London, it's called the monument. Go to Washington, D.C., it's called the monument. And it's a column that comes up like this, and it has a point at the top, like the top of a pyramid. And these are very, very important for ancient mythology, technology, star maps, connections, reflections, um, and also a statement to darker personalities let's say who when they recognize where this is placed they know that there is a family there a familiar that they can connect to there's a safety there but if we go back to ancient Egypt the thinking is I only learned this when I was actually in Egypt not what I read online or what Dolly down the road told me what I actually learned from a guide I hired from an ancient ancestral lineage of other sharers of ancient knowledge in Egypt so this guide Ali told me that the obelisk was first created by the pharaoh known as Hatshepsut. Hatshepsut. And Hatshepsut is a girl, she's a she. And her husband um, died and the, her stepson, the nine-year-old son of, of, of the, the pharaoh was too young to rule. So Hatshepsut stepped in as the pharaoh. She was so in touch with her masculine and her feminine that she would literally wear the, de the, de 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 the decorative beard, the ornament that a lot of the pharaohs are depicted wearing. She would also be bare-breasted, openly bare-breasted, open-chested, and wear the masculine wrap around the waist, etc. 
It is also said that Queen Hatshepsut is the only female pharaoh who is buried in the Valley of the Kings. Now, as more and more of ancient Egyptology comes to the fore, when I was studying Egypt mythology, etc., I'd never heard of the Valley of the Queens. But until I went there, I then realized, oh my God, then not only is the Valley of the Kings, which we always hear about, we always connect that brain program to King Tutankhamun, whose dad was Akhenaten, mm -hmm. whose mother was Nefertiti, we're told. But we bring that right back to when you're there, boots on the ground, Valley of the Kings, there's the Valley of the Queens. Ancient, yeah. hidden, covered up knowledge. Go ahead. I mean, what's so interesting when you bring this up, and again, I'm no expert on this, but the obelisk is an ancient phallic symbol. So it represents the solar energy, the male energy. And this is symbolic for the fact that male energy has dominated too much in our culture for so long. And, and, and you see the dome, actually, if you think of the dome, that represents the female moon energy. So really what we should be having is as much dome as phallic, but we don't. It's all phallic control. You see it in the Oval Office. You see it, obviously, with the Washington Monument. You see it. And, 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 I th and I think what we're trying to restore on our beautiful planet is balance, is harmony. It's not getting, we mustn't go too much to one polarity. We don't want to have total feminine dominance, but we don't want to have total masculine dominance. And this planet, without getting into transhumanism now and transgenderism is based on the polarity of man and woman. It just is the energetics. And we need to have balance between those two archetypal forces. And maybe that's a conversation for next time, working through the, the architectural symbolism of ancient Egypt and, uh, and, and the obelisks in, in obviously Europe and obviously in ancient Egypt. I love it. There's so much that you and I you know, have learned between us um, that, again, makes for such juicy conversation. Um, so, yes, we'd love to come together and discuss more of the sacred geometry, the magic square. But there's one other thing, too. I suddenly remember there's one other thing. You know, the obelisk, because you mentioned Tesla, and, of course, the, the gigant, gigantic lightning conductor, you see. So then, of course, you see, you and I know, we haven't even discussed it, but I know intuitively that when ancient Egypt and Atlantis was working before the fall, these were giant energy systems. And I've written this book about this, a children's book for adults, and I do paint these pictures symbolically in the book, that actually they were gigantic energy generators, think Tesla, on a massive scale, giving out free energy to the world. Yes, there you go. Yes, boom, shakalak. And Tesla's <laughs> great Walden Bridge Tower, you know, the free energy tower, because that man was so brilliant. I always joke and say he's my boyfriend. Um, he, um, he created- No, he's mine. Ah! <laughs> I will fight you for him. I will fight you for him. Um, it's so funny. Um, but you know, his great tower that was dismantled and taken down. I mean, again, it's old history to some, but to some it's new history and new learning that we should like now look at the energy poverty crisis created by your governments, created only by your governments. Oh my God, I was gonna say about Zelensky very quickly. So my friend in Costa Rica, because we got distracted because we're both a bit ADD, my friend in um, that's connected to a lot of these different people, they plug into him because he's got a few quid, but he's a really nice bloke, of course. Um, he's like, Danny, oh my God, I just got a phone call from this really, really, really mega world famous film director right, which whose name I will not say, but one of the mega, and it's not Spielberg and it's not George, it's not anyway, somebody else. Zelensky called him up and said, I want you to come to my bunker, my basement, where I'm conducting my operations. And I want you to film me, to film me, to make a really cool documentary of me, Zelensky. And this is true. It's true, I'm not, it's not gossip, this is true. And we'll see the documentary will come out yeah. and then we'll see that I'm not making shit up. And I got it firsthand. Um, or, well, yeah, firsthand from a friend. Um, and so that film director, is, he's been there and come back. The, the documentary's done, it's wrapped. Good. It's wrapped, people. It's already wrapped up. Beginning, middle and end is already wrapped up. Um, but anyway, that was something to kind of share there. Um, Very good. Let's go back to what you were saying. 
Well, I mean, this is all wonderful. I mean, there's so much to share. I mean, there's actually a lovely saying I came, one of my favorite astrologers is Pam Gregory. I absolutely adore her. And she said the other day, light is the game changer and love is the checkmate. <gasps> Isn't that beautiful? Boom. Boom. Light is the game changer and love is the checkmate. Pam Gregory. I just thought, wow, that hits it on the head. That is the ascension process. That's the 5D. That's the great awakening. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh my God. And I love you and I love you guys out there. And we are in such an exciting time of revelation and sharing and all coming together. And there is not one thing left on our planet, my planet, your planet, our planet that will be hidden from us. We are the light that we were seeking and it's okay. It's okay. You know, we're not going to be smited by an angry God for speaking out. No, we're not. We're that protected. Me a long time ago, huh? We're so protected and so loved. We've got other non-terrestrials here wishing, spurring us on, desiring that we tap in and join the divine matrix. This is the time of the ascension. It hasn't happened for eons. This is it. This and is that's it. why we're ascending. That's why we're coming together with you in a few days time. It's very exciting. That's right. The greatest gathering, the greatest gathering and the greatest homecoming that our planet has ever seen in the last 50 years, I would say. Not to discredit any other beautiful gatherings that have happened before and all the wonderful people who've sacrificed so much, so much. Yes. This specific gathering in a few days on the 21st of October is the next level, the next stage of the light bringers, of the truth bringers, of the love bringers. That's what it is. You know, gathering with our galactics here and there off planet. So to the people out there, again, uh, for last minute tickets, it is just go online, just go to the website, just look at galactic spiritual informers.com. That's it. Galactic, as in the galactics spiritual as in the spiritual people bringing their information informers because we're all informing and sharing.com galactic spiritual informers.com so george my love final words for you well really lots of love and thank you for allowing me to come together with you today and to share of course of course of course i sense in me a regular gathering between door george 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 Gorgeous, George and Danny. <laughs> It'll be so fun sharing all our stuff. For those that may have an interest Thank in it. You. You're welcome, darling. Love you lots. Lots and, of love. Aw, and to you guys out there, lots of mwah, lots of love and hugs to you. And enjoy the journey that you're on. It's a bit bumpy. It's a bit scary. It's a bit down the road and round the corner. But oh, look at what we're all discovering. My name is Danny Henderson. I love you and I will see you soon.